Welcome, everybody, to the Kona Shane Veterinary Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Andy Rourke. Guys, I'm here with a special bonus episode today. I am going to get the inside scoop on a new drug called Panaquel CA1. This is uh, conditionally approved by the FDA for acute onset of canine pancreatitis. There was a ton of buzz around this drug at VMX and at Western uh, Vet Conference, which is why I wanted to learn more about it. I have today uh, Dr. Suzanne Hartzell. She is uh, a diplomat of the American Board of Veterinary Practitioners and the Director of Companion Animal Veterinary Services at Siva Animal Health. I get into this with her. I just say straight up, give me the information on this new drug. It seems like it's going to be a big deal. I suspect it's it's going to be something I'm going to see in practice. Tell me what I need to know. How does it work? Uh, what are the clinical indications? How long does it take to work? What are the contraindications? What are the side effects? How much does it cost? What is the dosing schedule? Uh, what do I need to know to take this thing out of the box and feel comfortable with it? in my hands um yeah and know what to expect and that's what we do so this is super short to the point tons of information coming at you this is your primer it's going to get you up and ready to go and you can make the decision of uh if you want to have this uh drug in your practice or not or uh if when and how you're going to reach for it and put it into uh into service for you and your patients so anyway guys that's what we're doing today uh this episode is made possible ad free by siva animal health let's get into this episode this is your show we're glad you're here we want to help you in your veterinary career welcome to the cone of shame with dr andy rourke welcome to the podcast dr suzanne hartzell thanks for being here hey Andy, thanks so much for having me oh it's, it is my pleasure i am super fired up for what we've got today uh, for those who don't know you, you are a uh, you're a veterinarian. You were in private practice for over 20 years. You're a diplomat of the American Board of Veterinary Practitioners. You're a Fear Free certified. You are also the director of Companion Animal Veterinary Services at SIVA Animal Health. Um, I, 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 I am you're uh, you're such a neat person to talk to. I'm excited. You and I got to visit a bit recently because. I went to the VMX conference and then later the Western Veterinary Conference, which are to the two big vet conferences at the beginning of the year. And there was a ton of buzz there, a, bu- a, ton, a ton of buzz, a ton of buzz there about the new uh, drug that Siva has coming out called Panaquel CA1. And I wanted to, I just want to talk to you about it because there were there was a lot of demand for information. Uh, there was a lot of people talking about this. I was just like, hey. Suzanne, would you just come in and I want you just to give me give me a private run through of what Panaquel CA1 does and why anybody would use it. So let me just start with that. Um, what is it? What's it do? Yeah, that's a great question, Andy. And I will say we're we're pretty fired up about it as well. Um, the interest has been has been pretty huge and and we're very, very excited to share all that information. So what does it do? It's a great question. It's a completely novel molecule. This is the first of its kind that's ever been approved in in veterinary medicine. And certainly it's the first time we've had a solution for canine pancreatitis. Uh, So Panaquel CA1, the active ingredient is fusapolidib sodium for injection. So the way this medication works is it's very specific for neutrophilic inflammation, which as we know, that is the, the hallmark of canine pancreatitis. Those neutrophils actually will infiltrate the pancreatic tissue. And what's hard is if you think about pancreatitis and, and you know we don't really know what causes it, but when you think about that neutrophilic inflammation, what can you do to address that? You really up till now have not had any, any good solid, certainly no approved options or conditionally approved options for managing that. All we could do is manage you know, clinical signs. So the way it works is it actually stops the neutrophil from adhering and flattening out in those blood vessels and extravasating into that pancreatic tissue. So if you think about way back, at least for me, way back when I learned about immunology, um, the way that neutrophils work is they, um, ex- through the process of extravasation, so they actually pull themselves out of the blood vessels and will go into an area of injury or inflammation. and a, a few neutrophils are a good thing, but a, a huge influx of neutrophils, at, you know, as occurs with pancreatitis is a bad thing. That's that's what actually exacerbates that inflammation and that 
that vicious cycle with pancreatitis. Same thing actually happens in um, in human COVID. So a lot of the COVID patients that that died died because of neutrophilic extravasation into the lung tissue, the alveoli. Yeah. Yeah. So I've had a number of pancreat. I had a lot of pancreatitis cases in my career, and mm-hmm. I've had a number of them that did not get better and did not get better. And ultimately, I sent them to the specialist. And the specialist gave them steroids, which I would not do. I'm like, I am not, right. I am not giving this pancreatitis doc steroids. But I know that that's what the specialist is going to do. That it sounds like you have a a a different mm-hmm. approach to that. And yeah. that I've always, I mean, I've tortured myself. Like, should I do? I'm not doing, I'm not doing insides, you know, uh, like on these cases. And and I I've seen people give steroids, but it has always given me panic attacks. And so it sounds like it sounds like this is an alternative. Yeah, and, and it should give you a panic attack for 20 years. That it's always the panic of do you use steroids or do you not? Um, you know, steroids are certainly controversial. There's some data to say that it's helpful in in pancreatitis cases. There's also data to say that it could be a, potentially a problem. The problem with uh, corticosteroids and pancreatitis is that it is a globally immunosuppressive. You know, you're, you're sort of globally suppressing that that immune system. And that's not a good thing in some of these cases. In many of the cases, it's not. So fusaflodib is a leukocyte function associated antigen 1 inhibitor. Lots of crazy words and who cares what all that means, except that an LFA1 inhibitor stops that neutrophil in a very narrow, specific way from infiltrating the pancreatic tissue. Um, but it's a, it's a pretty neat mechanism of action. Yeah, talk to me about how this drug is given. So we're we're dealing with with uh, and it's dogs only, right? It's it's correct. It's caps. With dogs with pancreatitis, I'm assuming it's an injectable medication, just because mm-hmm. you know oral routes are really hard in vomiting patients. Talk to me a little bit about about dosing, the dosing schedule, how, how that's set up. Yeah, so uh, it's it's conditionally approved for the management of clinical signs associated with acute onset of canine pancreatitis, and that's an important wording, right? Because it's it's clinical signs associated with. You're giving it as an injection. It's labeled for once once daily for three days in a row. Okay. So so you say it's labeled for signs associated with. Does mm-hmm. that mean that if I don't have an official pancreatitis diagnosis, which I often don't, I'm often like, what you know, what's the there's a fine line between gastroenteritis and pancreatitis mm-hmm. sometimes. And sometimes I don't believe the snap test. And sometimes right. there's not money for a snap test or things like that. Are you saying that 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 I'm okay if I give this medication without maybe an official snap test lined up, you know, diagnosis? I, I'm just working off of my gut. It it sounds like uh, that's a one. Is that okay? Two. Is there benefit to treating gastroenteritis, or do we only see benefit when we actually have neutrophilic inflammation of the pancreas? So all all good questions. What I will say is that. It's, and I mean, in 20 years of clinical practice, did I always know I had a pancreatitis case? No. I mean, diagnosis of pancreatitis is tough. It's a combination of clinical signs and imaging sometimes, certainly things like SNAP CPL or, or SPEC CPL testing helps, gives us a, a better, um, you know, level of suspicion. But even sometimes with biopsy, do we really know if we have pancreatitis? If officially, no. So because the diagnosis is very, very difficult to pinpoint in most cases, it's the label saying that it's it's indicated for the management of clinical signs associated with, to me, is an important designation as a veterinarian. So I feel like, you know, if I were in clinical practice, would I use it if I had a, a clinical suspicion, absolutely, absolutely. And what's important to me about that too is understanding that we don't want to hold this drug as a break glass in case of emergency drug. It's just meant for the clinical signs associated with the um, acute onset of canine pancreatitis. All right, that 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 makes sense. That's nice. I like that. that Isn't that nice? Lot. It is nice. It makes yeah. us as veterinarians because we always want to feel like we're doing the right thing i mean that's obviously that's what we're all in it for and you never want to you never want to be afraid and and it just the wording to me makes me feel warm and fuzzy so oh, i know i love it all right so so here i am and i've got this miniature schnauzer and she's got pancreatitis and i'm going to start uh panic well ca1 uh with this patient how just i know I, I, every every is different every patient is different every situation is different B- ballpark for me how long is it before I can affect? I can start just expect to see effects of yeah. of treatment. Yeah, so that's another really good question. So, 
I will say there, there are three studies that were utilized to gain FDA conditional approval for this medication. And there's lots of information about conditional approval and what it means. And, and I can help you guys with a link to that, uh, to that information. But, but what we have to understand is that a pilot field study done to look at efficacy and safety is, is what we have to go on for how soon to expect an improvement in clinical signs. So the way the study was done, we looked at what's called MCI-5 or MCI-7 rather. So MCI means mean canine activity index, and it's a combination of seven clinical signs associated with pancreatitis. So decreased appetite, abdominal pain, vomiting, dehydration, you know, all the things that we think of when we think of that pancreatitis case. And that study showed, when we looked at efficacy, it showed that the the clinical score improvement from day zero to day one was statistically significant, as well as from day one to day three was statistically significant in that Panaquil CA1 group versus standard of care alone. And it's also important when we think clinically, you know, real life, right, that, that schnauzer that you just described, she's not just going to get Panaquil CA1, she's going to get IV fluids, she's going to get nausea medication, she's going to get pain medication. And all of those things were studied alongside fusapolitive sodium. So that is um, on the label as well that it's to be given with standard of care. Gotcha. Okay. So, so speaking of sort of, um, you know, uh, real life sort of in practice, help me get my head around a little bit about the price point of this drug. And so I know that every, every patch is going to be a difference in, in, in what they, and what they sort of price it at. But when I, when I start thinking about, about pricing of this product, um, you just, just, where are we talking about? And even if it's relative to other commonly used injectable drugs in the practice. Sure. Uh, help me with that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's reasonably and fairly priced. And, and the, um, the thing that I have to think about is when we have that patient, that schnauzer in the hospital for three days, five days, whatever, however many days, anything I could do to shorten that hospitalization time, because we know in the U.S. that hospitalization costs are significant for the owner. And anything we can do to shorten that hospitalization stay is going to decrease the overall total cost for the pet owner. But the way that I look at it, if I were in practice again, I would price it out like I do Serenia, Cytopoint, Convenia, any of these, um, you know, multi-use vial type medications yeah. that are, um, you know, priced by the by the weight of the patient. So this is a multi, multi-use vial here as well. And then Correct. what kind of, what kind of lifespan do I get in a, in a bottle? Yeah. So once you reconstitute it, like you do anything else that's in your hospital, uh, it's actually good for 28 days in the refrigerator. It is a multi-use vial. And um, some of the materials that are on our website, sivaconnect.com, have a dose chart uh, in, in the materials. There is a dose chart in the materials uh, that shows you by ML, by day, and and by vial how much each individual patient weight would need so that you can calculate what that total cost is going to be for the owner. Okay. That totally makes sense. Yeah. Are there, are there any dogs that I don't want to use this in? Are there any contraindications I should be aware of? Anything like that? Yeah. Contraindications are like many drugs, just dogs that are hypersensitive to fusapolitive sodium. Um, the challenge there is you don't know who that patient is until you give the medication. There have been cases of, um, you know, urticaria, hypersensitivity, but it's 3% of the, of the total cases or less. So always watching out for things like that is important from a clinical perspective. Um, but as far as overall, like, you know, do you avoid it in a patient with a certain disease? There's no data on that. Okay. All right. Um, are there any, any common side effects with the medication? Yeah, no, no common side effects necessarily. But when you look at the, at the pilot field study that was done, there's safety information in there as well on those, on those clinical patients. And that's a great chart. It's in the FOI. It's, it's definitely worth looking at. The things that were associated um, with that study were the things that are most commonly found in pancreatitis patients. So the FDA found the drug to be safe and reasonable, uh, reasonably expected to be effective on the label. So um, things like vomiting, decreased appetite, th- you know, the things that we associate with pancreatitis are, of course, listed as potential side effects. You mentioned uh, SivaConnect.com. You mentioned uh, a link on uh, um, conditional approval process, things like that. I'll put links to both of those things in the show notes. Is that where people should go if they want to learn more? Uh, Siva Connect, um, if they if they say, hey, I, I, I want to I try this out. I'd like to see it. I'd like to hold it in my hand. 
how, how do they how do they go about possibly bringing this into their practice? Yeah, so it will be available through all the distributors in the next couple of weeks to order. Um, the product will be available in clinics. We're thinking the very first part of April. So it should be in your hands very, very soon, um, which is exciting. And yeah, Siva Connect is a great place to go. But if you um, have your your Siva rep that you know, certainly reach out to them, reach out to your distributor reps. Um, you know, the we've had conversations with all of the uh, the corporate groups as well so their leadership could could guide you in the right direction as well perfect all right last thing do you have any pearls words of wisdom best practices for getting started so so when panaquil ca appears in my practice and i want to get the team on board and i want to kind of get them excited about it and i want to i want to start putting this into practice and making everybody feel comfortable with it help help me out with that any any uh, pieces of advice that you've seen that that have led teams to have particularly good results? Yeah, so it's a great, another great question. I will say that that Panaquel CA1 has been available in Japan since 2018 as Brenda Z. So there's there's a body of, of um, experience in Japan, which similar has a similar uh, architecture of veterinary hospitals and and the way they treat animals um, as we do. So that's that's experience to pull on. But my personal advice is You know, when I think about if I were back in practice, which hasn't been that long ago, I would not hold this drug for the sickest of the sick. It's not a drug that you hold until the dog is absolutely circling the drain. It's not that dog that you hold and 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 you're punting it to a a referral institution and and then you use it. You know, you're going to you're going to want to start these dogs early because it's for the clinical signs associated with acute onset, right? So it's not about holding it to the end. And we know that the cases that do poorly in pancreatitis, it's very often because of that neutrophilic inflammation is ramped up and there's so many neutrophils in that pancreas, it's just a raging inflammation. So the sooner and the harder you hit those cases, the better. Uh, I'm I'm so excited about this. This sounds like a, uh, it's going to be a wonderful tool in the toolbox. I, there's I've seen cases uh, in my career again and again who would have benefited from from something. I know. So I'm super excited about Suzanne. Thank you, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for laying all this stuff out. Uh, I am excited to learn more and uh, and and read here and follow up. But um, guys, I'll put links to everything we talked about in the show notes. Uh, guys, take care of yourself, Suzanne. Thanks again. Thanks, Andy. Appreciate you. And that is our episode. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot about it. I I, lo- I I love episodes like this. I love the fast download. I like getting in the car. And by the time I get out of the car, I know about a new tool that I can put to use in my uh, in my practice. And, uh, and I hope that that's what this episode was for you. Anyway, guys, take care of yourselves. Be well. Talk to you soon. Bye.